You know, I think leftists want Biden because they actually agree with me. And what I said was in 2019, 2020, if you think Donald Trump really is going to destroy this country and destroy our democracy and you're a leftist, he's your guy. Yeah. Because you vote for Joe Biden and you are empowering the banksters, the corporations, and you are giving them their stranglehold on this. But if you vote for Donald Trump, he'll give you everything you think is coming. Destruction. Here's the truth. They do agree with me in essence, but not on who's going to cause the destruction. They actually agree with me wholeheartedly. Joe Biden is, and, and us. Joe Biden will destroy the country. Donald Trump will fix the country. They do want Joe Biden to destroy the country. So they vote for Joe Biden. If they if they if they actually thought Trump was that bad, they'd vote for him. Yeah. But the truth is, they know Donald Trump will make America great again, secure the borders, bring back jobs. They don't want that. They want Biden's Alzheimer's ish ask catastrophe war conflict crisis they want to be able, they want to see the united states fall apart and and it makes a lot of sense from the perspective of the left empower uh, why you know you, you wonder why it is the leftists are supporting the fbi the fbi is going after trump supporters that's perfect one i i've been saying this consistently uh, uh the win condition for the left is the start of a civil war not winning a civil war they they want the system to shatter in half and that gives them basically, it throws the whole machine into disarray and then they can start doing whatever they want. Imagine Chaz Chop, but with no federal authority at all. Nothing to do. And it's already bad enough. There's barely any. Chaz, like uh, the Chaz Garden? That's right. Uh, well, then uh, everyone will definitely starve to death. <laughs> yeah, but I, but it, it's, it's, we can make fun of these people for their inability to actually farm in any capacity. But think about what that means. It means roving bands of communist barbarians raiding pantries and farms because they don't want to starve to death and they're dangerous, violent extremists. So if the country actually, you know, if Texas kicks off into some kind of, you know, Fed versus state dispute, and then, you know, Trump has already called on states to deploy their National Guard. Several already have. I think 10 different states have sent law enforcement or National Guard. Let's say the conflict actually breaks off. We don't call it a civil war for the time being, but then Joe Biden makes a move to try and suspend like oh, you know, Florida has been supplying aid to Texas in this conflict, so they send feds down to Florida to try and... Then the, then state troopers in Florida are fighting with feds, and now we're like, holy crap, this has begun. These Chaz Chop people are going to be like, now's our chance. And they're going to immediately be like, the feds can't stop us, local government can't stop us. And the reality is, I think if you look at who's more organized, I would argue that in the event something like that happens, the far left will be more organized than law enforcement. The reason is the, the, the Antifa cells are in loose communication with each other, but they have no external threat factor. If the federal government gets into it with Texas, and it's like, it's very light. I don't know if this, this, this will actually escalate. The Border Patrol has already sided with Texas National Guard. We'll see where that goes. But let's say the conflict between the feds and, the, and, the, and Texas escalates into several other states. It's like a Mexican standoff. The feds are way too uh, preoccupied are not going to be able to muster up any kind of forces to stop far left, far left extremists from seizing territory in major cities and local police cut off from the feds are going to just ditch. They're going to be like, I'm out. We it, it, Remember what happened when the far leftists went to the police station in Minnesota, in Minneapolis? What happened? All the cops ran full speed out of the building. They were not organized in the way people think they are. The far left is, or at least willing to do crazy things. So that's what I kind of see happening. I don't know. Well, at least in the case with Texas, I think it's more likely to be protracted litigation than, any, uh, than anything else. And for political reasons alone, I personally think, this is just my opinion, we'll see if you agree with this, I think the Biden administration is going to blink. I think that when they see half the states in the United States are on paper against them, when they see that the vast majority of the population, including most independent voters, are completely against them with regards to the border crisis, eventually it'll become politically too tenuous for Joe Biden to maintain his position. He's either going to do a 180 or he's going to get crushed politically. And then, and then the most likely outcome is that the left tries to take a shot at Trump or something like that, unfortunately. Unless they false flag something. Possible. So it depends on what you think how desperate you think the feds are and how depraved they are right now. The challenge is if Joe Biden, like the, the border patrol saying, no, we agree with Texas on this one. We're not going to, we're not going to be arresting them or stopping them from securing the border. I mean, that's, that's showing the emperor has no clothes. Joe Biden has no command over his law enforcement agents. Mm -hmm. They win the Supreme court ruling on the ability to tear down these barricades and border patrol just out the union outright said, nah, how desperate 
will the federal government be to assert their authority, federal supremacy? They may not care that much. Biden may just be feckless and go, you know, and just disappear. But that creates a, another big risk. Or maybe not. Maybe it's their win condition. Uh, showing that states now have supremacy in the law over the federal government because of what Texas did. Other states are going to follow suit. It's uh, it, it's blood in the water. The sharks will come. But they've already been doing so. I mean, uh, a, a handful of states and, and cities as well have been openly ignoring the immigration law anyway. Yep. The sanctuaries, I mean, they completely ignored Trump. They wouldn't work with him. They won't work with ICE or anything like that. So there's already a precedent. Of course. So uh, basically, it's nothing new under the sun. Kind but of. It, but it's an escalation. Yeah. And a course. serious one at that. It's one thing when, you know, it's happening with sanctuary states and cities. Federal government will say, hey, we want you to you know, arrest these illegal immigrants, they say, we will not cooperate with the federal authorities. But when ICE shows up, they don't stop them. ICE walks in, makes the arrests, and they just say, we won't assist you in any of this. So it's passive resistance. They've not actually confronted. Imagine if in California, when ICE shows up to deport some illegal immigrant, California National Guard blocks them from doing so. That's where we're at with Texas. So what we've seen with sanctuary states and cities so far has just been passive. The Texas move is active resistance. They deployed armed soldiers. If that is the next step and the Biden administration's response is, well, gosh darn it, whatever, other states are going to be like, we, our laws matter more. And think about what this means for Texas. Texas allows you to have a suppressor for your gun so long as it's bought in Texas and they don't require you to get the federal registration that you need to get uh, anywhere else, which is in defiance of federal regulation. Based. The NFA. Yeah, so uh, the, the National Firearms Act and its modifications mean that if you want to get a suppressor for your gun, you got to fill out this, these crazy federal forms. takes a long time. Uh, you got to pay $200. I think it takes up to a year for some people, of eight months to a year. In Texas, they're like, no, you can buy one. We won't arrest you for it. The feds might get mad about it. Screw them. Already, you see the passive rejection of federal law in Texas, and other states are following suit with gun sanctuaries. I wonder if, if the federal government really does fear that this is one grain of sand too many actively resisting with armed soldiers and they decide they do want to play hardball it's not going to be border patrol agents walking up and being like well you know we got to do what we got to do it's going to be a false flag it's going to be a psyop it's going to be it's going to be real war and i love this when the media says conspiracies aren't real and they say oh a conspiracy theory it's like if you think governments are are declaring it's, it's like the colonial era warfare of people marching down the fields pointing guns at each other you're you're a moron. And of course, the media wants people to believe that. But real war is going to be the Biden administration saying, I don't care how suppress Texas. Let's figure that out. And that would be false flag. We've got you got a convoy heading down to the border right now. You got a bunch of private militia people saying they're going down to the border. And all it takes is one Fed to show up wearing a MAGA hat. I think I tend to agree with you. that I think the Biden administration will blink. And I think what's interesting is that they are already trying to spin the narrative as fast as they can. So when mm -hmm. Mayorkas released this letter today saying, you know, I'm not going to appear in front of the House um, Homeland Security. You guys made it difficult. He, I mean, it's a long letter where he's saying, you guys made it difficult to schedule. And then you asked for written testimony. And actually, I'm really good at my job. And actually, we've deported tons of people, more people than Trump has ever deported. And, you know, it, he is desperately trying to make the case that he is both good at his job. And also, there's a whole section where he talks about how he's received accolades from the Biden administration. He's gotten, he's been uh, rewarded for his service. And so in some ways it has made me wonder if Mayorkas knows on some level that Biden could potentially ask for his resignation as a way to say like, look, I'm compromising you with you Republicans. I'll get rid of the DHS secretary. And then you guys have to come to the table when it comes to congressional nominations, because that's what they're saying right now. Mm -hmm. They're saying, actually, oh, the only way to change the border situation, they being, you know, Democrats, sort of left leaning politicians, the only way to change the situation at the border is uh, in Congress. And actually, the Biden administration can't do anything. And this is where I start to think that the Biden administration knows they're on the losing end of this and they are likely to try and spin or back out of the position they put themselves in the funny part is that the thing that might stop a potential false flag in a greater border crisis would be biden's ego because again he does the strongman thing he in his mind because he's a little bit scrambled he's still 30 40 years old he's still beating up corn pop and stuff like that and so to save his lagging presidency and really genuinely try to get another term he might slip his handlers he might fire mayorkas 
Uh, he may yeah. not. He may reprimand him or something like that. He could do a total 180. We've seen this on energy. Uh, one day he's approving new drilling leases. The next day he's canceling a pipeline. The next day he's okaying more exports. And the next day he's blocking exports. It doesn't even make any sense. That's why it's I think completely it's completely incoherent. That, that's why I was saying I think it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. That there are some people making independent decisions. I, I bet a lot of his staff are going, this guy's out of his mind. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to go do it. I'm going to do whatever I want. The other half are like, I have no idea what he said. I'm just going to do something random. And so it's a mix of incoherence and just people running, running you know, their own show. It's yeah. a bad sign for a re-election. There's no clear leadership in this White House. And if you look at his record, it's inconsistent across the board on a lot of things. I mean, again, I, it, of course, you know, it's easy to make fun of her, but Corinne Jean-Pierre is constantly saying things that then get immediately disproven or challenged in the White House press, press by the White House press corps. And so the administration, to me, reads as weak. I obviously have some of my own bias because they do a lot of stuff I wouldn't agree with and anyways, but their messaging is constantly trying to spin and redirect and look the other way. And that to me says that they have no plan. It's very different from the things you hear coming out of, you know, not even just Trump, but any, you know, conservative leaning politician right now. Well, Karine Jean-Pierre's got her own problems. Uh, she rarely knows what she's talking about. <laughs> No, she never knows. And you, you think she must be angry at a certain point, being like, you guys send me out there and I look stupid every day. But <laughs> she she makes it clear that she's angry every single day. That's the, <laughs> that's the thing. It's wild. Uh, it doesn't make you miss Jim Pisaki at all. Yeah, at least that was funny because you had the circle back around memes. Yeah. And I, dressing like, uh, what was that character from Peanuts? And she always wore like the, the green shirt and stuff. Uh, was, it, was it Peppermint Patty? Maybe. Oh, the tomboy yeah. chick with the green shirt and stuff and, and oh, Jen Saki always yeah, and Jen Saki always looked like her and acted <laughs> like her too. I don't know. Peppermint Patty. I feel like Jen Psaki made a good exit of the Biden administration when she did. She, they were like two years in. She was like, I'm going to pass the torch yeah. to this, you know, young lady of color and I'm going to go get my own show and I'm going to leave this shipwreck behind. She was good at her job. She uh, she made a great decision. She did. Best decision but of her life. As much as people were like, I can't stand her, she's lying. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but she she was that's also her job to lie oh of course to spin but she was good at it we we just know she's lying and the press they're morons and they they, they buy into it Karine jean pierre is just like one of the stupidest people <laughs> just in general and it's just it's it's amazing how every day there's some kind of scandal where she says something moronic and just the whole the white house looks ridiculous mm -hmm. there was whole... it's, i don't blame her for all of it biden is ridiculous you know but, but, also, she, but she makes Biden look coherent sometimes. <laughs> That's the whole problem. I mean, look at Kamala yeah. Harris too. It's like uh, it's it's a maybe a barrel would, of monkeys. Could you imagine? Like, what if what if Kamala Harris is this super intelligent, articulate, witty, fast talker, and and what happens is her handlers come to her and say, "You will not upstage the president." Is that clear? Oh and she's like, what is that supposed to mean? I mean, how am I supposed to articulate my thoughts in public and explain this to the people in a way that's that's manageable if I have to talk like I'm stupider than Joe Biden? Figure it out. <laughs> she's like, oh my God. She goes home to her husband and she's like, they're threatening me that if I don't, that if I make Joe Biden look stupid, I'm in trouble. And the next day she walks out on stage to give her speech. She goes, community is our community. And that's the story of how uh, I imagine know. herself practicing in the mirror every morning. <laughs> and the second gentleman is like, you're doing great. Just let us keep the cool house. Also, I got a <laughs> demeaning title. Second gentleman. I don't really like that. <laughs> so funny, she, dude. she could also be a, a method actor like George W. playing dumb. Oh, that's I honestly possible too. I, I've, I've always thought that George W. was actually very cunning. And he realized that he could get away with a lot more if he played the befuddled like Yep. Slightly hazy, slightly but retarded, likeable. older dude. Right. And then Dick Cheney takes the rap because Dick Cheney's there behind the curtain, <laughs> rubbing his hands we're together gonna drop evilly. Some bombs. Yeah, we're going to kill the children. <laughs> and then her daughter was going like, I, I look up to you, daddy. And he's like, that's right. I mean, granted, she was an old woman when he was president, but still. Uh, I, I think Kamala Harris is much, you know what I really can't stand is the people who assume all these people are stupid. Mm -hmm. When they're like, the leftists will say Donald Trump's a moron. He's so stupid. I watched some ad some guy made against Donald Trump and they're like, his bankruptcies should have ended his business, no. but his bank buddies bailed him out. I'm like, Donald Trump had 500 businesses and five of them had bankruptcies and they weren't even his core business. The Trump, uh, the Trump organization was doing fine and generating a ton of money. If you think Joe Biden is stupid, you are incorrect. He may be incoherent old with a broken brain by today. By, by today. That's fair. That's fair. I don't think Kamala Harris is stupid. I think she's probably doing what you're describing. 
making herself look as dumb as possible for some reason that benefits her, you don't get to her position by being stupid. I, there, there, are, there are people who, who want to believe, and it's, I think it's more of a leftist idea, that people in positions of power and wealth are undeserving of their power and wealth. And it may be undeserving as an opinion, depends on what you mean by undeserving. But they typically are saying, like, this guy did nothing to, to get where he is. Donald Trump's so stupid, his dad gave him the money. No, Trump did get money from his dad, but he still had to build all of this. There are a lot of people who inherited money who went nowhere and fizzled out. People uh, who work hard are smart enough and, and have the merit or are evil enough, are going to get ahead. Kamala Harris sounds really dumb when she gives speeches, but I don't believe for a second that she's that stupid. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think she is necessarily stupid. I think she is somewhat self-absorbed, right? Like, I don't think she generally entered politics, you know, to serve the people. Not that very many do, although I think there are some who think maybe in the beginning they can help. Uh, I think ultimately she saw being Biden's VP as the chance to springboard her potential run for the presidency, and she was never able to poll favorably enough. I mean, her likability was always low, even lower than Biden's. I mean, you know, Biden got to hang out with Obama for a couple of years. People had a somewhat friendly uh, view of him, but she just became worse and worse and worse. She was almost a surprising VP pick to me because, you know, other than maybe the demographic demographic position she holds her personality just never resonated with anyone at all thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time